In these bottom three examples, the challenge that we have is that the uh, fraction, we have fractions with a square root in the denominator. And so we have to do what's called rationalizing the denominator. We have to uh, get that square root out from the denominator. And in the first example, our best technique uh, to do that is to just multiply the top and bottom by whatever is underneath the square root symbol. So I have a root 10 in the denominator. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by root 10. Now, by multiplying the top and bottom by the same thing, I'm not changing the value of the fraction, I'm just changing how it looks. So what that means for us in the denominator, if I multiply root 10 times root 10, square root of 10 times 10 is just going to simplify into a regular 10, or square root of 100 simplifies into 10. So I've succeeded in getting rid of the square root from the denominator. I no longer have a radical in the denominator. I've rationalized my denominator. Now in the numerator, I've got 6 times the square root of 10. And so now I just need to reduce my fraction. And so the place that we have to be careful is we can't reduce the tens because the 10 up in the numerator is not really a 10. It's a square root of 10, which is 3.2-ish, something like that, if we were to push buttons on our calculator. So I can't reduce those, but I can reduce the 6 and the 10. So I know that 2 divides evenly into both of those, so I can go ahead and simplify that just like regular. And so then we end up with a final answer of 3 root 10 over 5. The second example ratchets up the difficulty a little bit in that we have a fourth root in the denominator instead of a square root. So that means that it's not going to be enough for us to just multiply the top and bottom by the fourth root of 8a because we need four of something to clear it out from underneath a fourth root symbol. On the previous question, we just needed a pair of tens, so just multiplying by root 10 on the top and bottom was good enough. In this case, uh, we're going to have to um, think a little bit harder about what we need to multiply the top and bottom by so that the denominator will be able to be cleared of any radical. It might be easier for us to start with the a there. So with the a, right now I have a single a underneath the radical symbol. I need four of them. So that means I need three more. I need an a cubed to complete the set of four so that when I multiply the two denominators together, I'll have a to the fourth underneath a fourth root symbol. And so therefore, I'll be able to take one out. I'll have an a, just a regular a in the denominator. We might also think, well, let's just do the same thing with the 8. However, it's better for us if we think of this as 2 times 2 times 2. Instead of thinking of it as I've got 1 8, I need 3 more. So I have to multiply by 8 to the third on the top and bottom underneath that fourth root symbol as well. Instead, think of this as I've got 3 2s. I just need one more two. And so what this does for us is it just means that we're not going to have to do anywhere near as much simplifying at the tail end of this problem if we can multiply the top and bottom by the smallest thing possible. So what this does for us is on the bottom, we end up with the fourth root of, so 8 times 2 is 16, a to the fourth, and then up on the top, just 1 times the fourth root of 2a cubed, that expression that we multiplied the top and bottom by. And so now what we can do is we can see on the bottom here, 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, so I'm going to end up with a 2 on the bottom. a to the fourth, if I use that rule of dividing whatever the power on the variable is by the root, so 4 divided by 4 is 1, goes in evenly, so I have a single a on the outside. And then up on the top, it looks gruesome, but there's nothing that we can do with that, so it's just the fourth root of 2a cubed. If you can handle that one, you're in good shape. We'll see some simpler examples of this sort of thing uh, in our homework and in uh, subsequent examples uh, in our uh, warm-ups as well. For the third and final example with the root in the denominator, uh, it may seem as though it's kind of back to a simpler circumstance where we're going to just be able to multiply the top and bottom by root 7. But on the bottom there, we would have to distribute that root 7 to the root 7 minus 2. And so we wouldn't succeed in getting rid of the root 7 from the denominator. We would just shift it so that it would end up being attached to the 2. And then that root 7 times root 7 would turn into a 7. 
And then if we multiply by root 7 again, we'd have the same problem. So in this type of circumstance, when we have an expression in the denominator that has both a root part or, and a, a rational part, or if it has two roots um, separated by addition or subtraction, we need to multiply by what's known as its conjugate. And so all I'm going to do is multiply by the exact same expression, root two, or root 7 and 2, but I'm going to multiply by uh, root 7 plus 2 instead of root 7 minus 2. What I'm going to take advantage of, if we think back to our uh, uh, algebra days, is kind of a difference of squares principle. Because when I FOIL this out, and that's the technique that I'm going to have to use to clear out that denominator, I'm going to multiply root 7 times root 7, which is going to give me 7. And then when I multiply root 7 times 2, I'm going to get a positive 2 root 7. Then when I multiply negative 2 times root 7, I'm going to get a negative 2 root 7. And those two terms are going to subtract out. They're going to disappear. And then the last thing I have to do is multiply the negative 2 times the positive 2 to get negative 4. And so what this does for me is now those two middle terms cancel each other out. And so you can see that we're left with no square root in the denominator anymore. Up in the numerator, I'm going to, for now, just leave it as 12 times root 7 plus 2, because that's going to help me with my simplifying here in just a second, because on the bottom I'm getting 7 minus 4, which gives me 3. If I change that, just in the interest of space. So now I can uh, reduce the 3 and the 12 to give me just 4 and now I can go ahead and distribute that. So it's just a little bit easier for me to simplify without distributing that 12 and then having to divide everything by 3. So we end up with 4 times root 7 plus 8. So again, the key here is this idea of this conjugate pair. If we have an expression that has some addition or subtraction in the denominator, then we're going to keep that expression exactly the same, multiply the top and bottom, but just change the, uh, the negative to positive, or if that had been root 7 plus 2, we would have just gone with root 7 minus 2, and we would have had the same effect where these two middle terms would have canceled each other out, and then we no longer have a square root in the denominator. And so to close, close things out, we're uh, connecting the idea of ro uh, roots with exponents. And so when we talk about a rational exponent or a fractional exponent, really what we're saying is a root could be rewritten in exponent form. And so if I have the nth root of a, I can rewrite that as a to the 1 over whatever the root is. So a fractional exponent just means it's a root. Or if we have something other than 1 in the numerator, so for example, if we uh, see a to the m over n, so it might be a little bit easier to see where everything's moving here. So the denominator of that fractional exponent becomes the root, and then the numerator becomes the exponent on that variable or number underneath the radical symbol. So if we look at the first example here, if I've got the eighth root of x to the sixth, and I want to rewrite this in exponent form, I'm going to rewrite this as x to the, now, in my exponent, the root is going to go to the bottom, so it's going to be uh, x to the 6 eighths, with the 8 moving to the bottom as the, uh, the root goes to the denominator of the exponent, and then the 6, the exponent on the x, stays in the numerator. And then I just have to reduce that fraction and then rewrite it as x to the 3 fourths. And so what I'll point out here is something that I alluded to in the rules for exponents, is if we want to go back to radical form from here, this would be the fourth root. The four would turn into the root. And then x to the third would be underneath that radical symbol. And so this is what we mean by reducing the index of the root. So the eighth root of x to the sixth, the simplified radical version of that would be the fourth root of x to the third. But the only way that we're really going to be able to simplify that to reduce the index of the root is by taking advantage of these fractional exponents. And then for the last one here, we've got the fifth root of x to the fourth. So before I do anything, I'm going to take a look at this 32 and realize, well, that breaks into 16 times 2. 
the 16 breaks into four times four, the fours break into twos. So taken all together here, I've got a set of five twos underneath a fifth root. So I'm going to be able to get a two out from underneath that fifth root symbol. Now for the X, I can't get anything out because I need five X's. I only have four of them. So I'm just gonna go straight to rewriting that in exponent form. So the root goes to the denominator. So it's gonna be the five in the denominator with the exponent staying up top, so the four. So we get two X to the four fifths power is the equivalent of that expression.